very good morning to all of you. Uh, in this uh, training session of CIPLA program, our topic that we have selected for this session is the principle of electrical safety. The topic is uh, very vast and um, within a stipulated time, we will learn certain aspects of uh, electrical hazard and how do we uh, protect that electrical hazard using certain equipments and that is the principle behind the electrical safety. So the topics that will be covered in this particular session are the grounding, earthing and bonding first we will discuss. So what is the difference between grounding, earthing and bonding? These terms we usually use uh, in the field of electrical safety and most of the times we are confused with the term, especially the grounding and earthing. What is the difference between these two terms? And when to use, and what are the different benefits that we have in uh, using the grounding technique, using the earthing technique, and using the bonding technique? The next topic we are going to take is the earth potential rise. So there is a change in the potential in the earth when we have some equipments, power equipments, which are at different potential with respect to the human who are in close vicinity. So what is the increase in the potential of the system due to the presence of earth known as earth potential rise? Then the together one topic is there, which is known as step potential and touch potential. This is closely related with earth potential rise. So what is the reason for step and touch potential? and how to avoid that, that we are going to study. Then the next topic that we have is what is electrical safety? What are the different systems in electrical safety and what are the devices we will use for electrical safety? Now, the one of the very important topic is types of earthing system. What are the different types of earthing system usually adopted in India as well as in different countries? and what are their functioning that is known as the earthing system. And then we will see what are the different types of earthing system. Once we know the earthing system, so we can understand the residual current devices because there will be some leakage current every time with the associated current carrying device. So some residual current will flow and how to avoid that, that is the residual current device or the leakage current protection device. What are the different methods of earthing a system is known as the methods of earthing, whether it is a rod earthing, plate earthing, strip earthing that we are going to study in methods of earthing. And then the different power apparatus, whether it is a generator, motor, transformer, it's neutral will be earthed and the earthing process will be different and they are known as the, known as the methods of earthing and what are its advantages that we are going to see. The earth and the soil plays a very important role when we talk about the earthing and what are the different factors which affect the earthing that we are going to see. And then finally, we are going to see what are the measurement of earth resistance, how we are going to measure the earth resistance. So these are the topics will be covered within this stipulated time and under the principles of electrical safety. So first let us see what is the difference between grounding, earthing and bonding. So the definition of grounding is whenever we have some connection between the live parts, live parts means the current carrying wire. So the connection which is there between the live parts of a machine, machine is a device, it may be a generator or a motor or a transformer, that carries a current in the normal operation and the earth such as the neutral of a generator or neutral point of a star connected power transformer. That is known as the grounding technique. It means that the live parts which is carrying the current under the normal operation, it will be connected to the neutral which is the common point of any three phase system in the star and it will be connected to the light part. So that is known as the grounding. Next, the difference of grounding and earthing. So earthing 
the term has oftenly been misused with the grounding technique but there is a little difference in the earthing the connection is between the metallic or conductive parts such as the body frame the metallic enclosure which is non current carrying during normal operation so if you see the outer enclosure of any device it will not carry a current then the outer enclosure or the body frame which is metallic in nature if we connect that appliance and connect it to earth or a ground then only it is known as earthing so you can understand the difference between grounding and earthing is that the live part where the current is flowing if you are connecting that part to the neutral then it is known as grounding through the earth and if you are connecting a non metallic non conducting part whether it is a body frame of the test devices that is known as earthing so that is a big difference between a grounding and earthing but oftenly we use this term as the synonyms one is known as the bonding technique so what is the bonding bonding is the process of connecting and permanently joining two electrical conductors machine pipe and devices and all metallic parts in power installations so you will see that in any power installations you will have different devices which are work in close to each other and all these devices if you are connecting together and permanently connecting to a conductor that is known as bonding so in order to understand these three different terms let us take one diagram which indicates the different devices on the left hand side we can see that there is a transformer and then we have some machine whether it is a motor or a generator and we have some switching panel and these are connected through wires and we can see that there are two wires coming from the transformer one is the line which is shown by the red color and another one is the neutral which is the return path of the current so the black one is the neutral and the red one is the line conductor now if we see how to connect the different devices so that we can have little bit of electrical safety in these devices then the grounding technique suggests that the neutral of the device that is the black color is connect to the earth so if the neutral of the device connect to the earth that is known as grounding whereas earthing if you see earthing is the outer surface of or the metallic enclosure that is directly connected to the earth so that is known as earthing if uh, maybe there may be a device which where the neutral is not connected with earth then we cannot say that it is grounded or it is earthed so whenever you have the live part and the live part is connected to earth that is known as grounding and the outer enclosure if it is connected to earth then that is known as earthing earthing term generally is used in uk and india whereas in us the term grounding is basically used now if we talk about the bonding bonding means if you are connecting two outer frame of two device you have you can see here the motor and the panel the outer frame is being connected with a blue color wire and it means both are at the same potential the outer body and it is known as the bonding technique so that makes a difference between grounding earthing and bonding now generally there is a standard by which we can understand whether we are dealing with the line current or whether we are dealing with earth or the ground using some color symbol so the color symbol that is being adopted by various countries are as such that the line or the high voltage positive terminal of the current carrying wire is represented with a red color whereas if you see the earth is being represented by green color and the ground is represented by black color because if you are using some device and you are having the wires coming out of the device 
so it should have a, no, a notion that which one is the line current carrying conductor and which one is the earth and the ground so some color symbol has been given generally we can see that green and yellow is used as ground uh, in different different countries where, while the red will always be the line current carrying conductor so the color symbol plays an important role in the device understanding the line current and the earth and the ground now what are the benefits of this grounding earthing and bonding so grounding advantage if you see it provides an effective path to the fault currents from the equipment to the power source protect the power system installation and the devices so in grounding you will be getting one effective path when there will be some fault current and this fault current will be generated from the equipment to the power source and it will protect that particular device or the installation against the fault current and when the fault current will be there then there will be some system of unbalancing means the three phases will have different impedance path and the magnitude of the current will be different in the three phases so the balance of the system is very much required and this can be possible only when the system is grounded so that there is no fault occurring in the system so if there is a fault occurring in the system the fault current will go to the ground and the other three phases will be under the balanced condition it will also protect against the surge voltage surge voltage means there is a change in the level of the voltage when there is lightning phenomena when there is a fault in the line or whether there is a switching surge switching surge occur generally when you have the capacitor in the system there is a sudden change in the voltage so whenever these surge voltages are there or certain discharge is there then what happened is that the over voltage has to flow to the ground and then on the it will make the system stable and the reliable so whether there is a fault occurring or due to the lightning phenomena the charging or discharging of the circuit with the help of a switch that is a capacitive action there is certain over voltage phenomena occurring which are known as the switching surges so the earthing benefits are primarily used to avoid human beings from electric shock so you can understand here the difference in the benefit of grounding and earthing is that grounding is protecting the device whereas the earthing is protecting the human being which who are working with the device so grounding will protect the device against the fault current and earthing will protect the human being from electrical shock so difference between a living and non living both has to be protected against the switching surge or the over voltages now bonding that is the connection between the two live uh, two metal bodies of the devices and if there is a no bonding present then what will happen is that if a person or a human being who is working with that device by means if he is touching two different pieces of the equipment which are operating at two different voltage level at the same time then it will act as an equalizer and receive an electric shock due to the energy build up because of potential difference at the both end you have a generator and you have a switching board both are at different potential and if a person is holding both the apparatus together and there is no bonding then in that case the person will get an electric shock so we need to protect that through the ground so two devices outer body has to be connected and that has to be connected with the earth so the benefits when we talking about again i would like to repeat that if you want to protect the device from fault you have to be grounded the device if you want to protect the human being who is operating the device the system has to be earthed and since different devices are there who which are a part of any installation system then all are connected together and they are grounded that is known as the bonding technique so the live wire which is touching the metallic 
body of the machine and comes in contact with the person may get hazardous even fatal electric shock so the person has to be saved because he is touching two different electrical appliances which are at two different potential so he will get an hazardous electric shock but if the two device are bonded together and that are earthed then he can be protected against this electrical shock next topic uh, that we are going to see is the earth potential rise so why there is a change in the potential and what happened due to the presence of the earth so earth potential rise generally occur or caused when there is a earth fault and these earth fault generally occur in electrical substa substations it occurs in the power plants and it occur in the high voltage transmission lines so whenever a person who is working in a substation or a power plant or near to any high voltage transmission line or the communication network he is standing and if there is a fault then there will be a change in the potential that is known as earth potential rise what do these earth potential do so when there is a change in the potential of the earth it can cause hazardous voltage which is many hundred of meters away from the actual fault location also it will get affected so if a person is standing a long distance from the device and due to the occurrence of the fault even the even the distance between the person and the device is quite far then also due to the hazardous voltage there will be certain potential rise and the person may have may get affected so there are many factors which depend this level of hazard hazard is not a very uh, simple term or it cannot be measured uh, very easily so the factors which determine the level of hazards are many including the available fault current so it is not only the fault current that causes an hazard hazard caused by various other factors whether it is a lightning phenomena whether it is a switching surge phenomena whether there is a change in the earth resistance the temperature humidity there are many factors are there which are causing the change in the potential so talking about uh, the uh, type or the factors affecting the hazard we can thought of the soil type because the earth soil may be different from place to place location to location so soil types will be different it may vary in terms of the moisture content some soil are dry type some uh, soils are wet or moist type so soil moisture also plays a very important role when we talk about the temperature like the earth or the soil which is present in the location where the temperature is also less then some amount of moisture may be present in the soil so temperature and moisture are closely related with each other and it is also depending upon whether the location is near to the rocky soil hardened soil or loose soil also when we talk about the fault current what is the time uh, taken by the fault to be interrupted or the clearing of the fault that also plays a very important role in the earth potential rise so various factors uh, that determine the change in the earth potential to cause the hazard is the physical phenomena whether it is a soil moisture temperature or rock as well as the fault which occur in the system and how much time it has been taken to clear that fault so we can see uh, from this picture that a person or rather i can say two person are standing near to a transmission line which is a high voltage transmission line tower and if there is some fault or induced voltage is there then what happen is that the two person may get electric shock even the person are standing 100 of meters away from the electric tower so earth potential rise is a safety issue in the coordination of power and telecommunication services so it is not only the power sector even in the telecommunication devices the mobile towers which are being present 
close to the locality where the person is standing or moving so the earth potential rise may increase because of the fault or the induced voltage so the person who is standing in the close vicinity of any high voltage devices where the fault has taken place the user may get some hazardous voltage and these voltage hazardous voltage which the person may get or get two different terms we have been used for that one is known as the step potential and another is known as the touch potential so these are the two different risk which are associated with this hazard so what is step potential and what is touch potential that we are going to see and as the name suggest step means a person who is walking or what is the distance between the two leg of a person who is in close uh, vicinity of the device and the touch potential means the person who is actually touching one electrical device and both the person will get the impact of hazard so the step potential definition is the potential difference that is the voltage between the feet of a person there will be two feet and he will be standing on the floor of a substation so there is a substation where the person is standing and the distance between the spacing between the one step if it is 0.5 meter then due to the flow of fault current through the ground system he, there will be a change in the potential difference so a person who is standing in the substation floor and there is a distance of 0.5 meter then there may be some step potential uh, between the two feet of a person whereas the touch potential is the potential difference between the finger of a raising hand which is touching the faulted structure so whenever a person is touching any faulted structure whether it is a a transmission tower whether it is a generator or whether it is a transformer in the substation and the feet of a person are standing on the substation floor then the person will get a shock even the ground structure is carrying the fault current and the touch potential should be very small so both step potential and touch potential occur uh, between the leg of a person which is the step and when a person is touching some faulted structure both will get hazardous so electrical hazard that is being caused due to the step potential and touch potential may cause the uh, your heart to be blocked so a person who is standing near the structure you can see that because of step potential there will be some body current flowing because of touch potential some body current will flow and there will be a claustrophobic nature and the heart may get blocked he may be getting a heavy ha a hazard of voltage to protect this step potential and touch potential due to the earth potential rise there are different hardwares that we incorporate in the design so these hardwares uh, which are the devices being taken in the substations are the grading conductors grading means to equalize the potential difference the conductor meshes are there because where you stand in the substation there will be different conductor so some mesh structure they create so the potential difference do not vary there are different type of electrodes being used in the substation it is a vertical electrode horizontal electrode deep bore electrodes counterpoise electrodes different type of electrodes are there which protect the fault current or the earth potential rise increase the earthed planes and rod groups are there proper bonding arrangement has their ground conduct condition agents we will study this in deep today what are the conditioning agents how you can um, make the earth to be better the soil to be better so that the potential rise do not take place so they are the conditioning agents and you have high resistance surface layer in order to increase the resistance of the soil what do we do so that this earth potential rise decreases so we have certain hardwares uh, which are in the installation purpose the design purpose which are used and so that this potential may be in quite a check uh, before i proceed i may ask you if you have any doubt you can just ask me so that we can have some discussion 
Uh, so any doubt till now or any question you have? Okay, if not, then uh, I'll proceed then. So we have understood that earth safety is very important. And uh, to create earth safety or electrical safety, uh, we have earthing technique, bonding technique, we have grounding technique. We also studied uh, like uh, what is the region for which the potential rise is there and how the cause of hazard or shock occurs. Little bit, let us go in more detail on the system perspective or on the device perspective what is electrical safety? So whenever there is electricity hazard, it is basically grouped into two important categories. And they cause thermal hazard or they cause shock hazard. These are the two different hazards which occurs due to the electricity. Thermal hazard, as the name suggests, thermal means heat. So it will cause the electrical overheating because whenever there is a current and there is a resistance on, uh, due to the human body resistance, there will be certain heating phenomena of I square R. So I square R is nothing but the heat produced due to, due to the current carrying current, due to the current carrying wire I and the resistance being the R. So thermal hazard occurs when there is electrical overheating. Whereas the shock hazard occurs when the electric current passes through a person and he get choked in his heart, the blood vessels, the capillaries all get blocked. So hazards will be categorized into thermal hazard and shock hazard. These are the two different categories. To understand the safety process, let us understand by with one simple electric circuit. What do this electric circuit consist? The electric circuit is a simple AC circuit where you have a source which is varying with respect to time, its voltage as well as its phase and it is connected with a device. The device is represented with a resistance. So resistance is a device. It may be human also. Humans also have some resistance and the source is having a voltage. Now you see in this uh, particular circuit, there is no safety features. Safety features means you do not have earth, earthing, neither grounding nor bonding. Nothing is there. It is a very uh, simple AC circuit, uh, which will help us to understand the fault and how electrical safety can be taken care of. So the resistance represent the device, the voltage represent the source of electricity. Now, on the same case, now little bit, if we add some safety means, to this particular system, how do we add the safety features? So let us see, there is a resistance. Resistance is for a device or an appliance. If we put a case of appliance, there is an outer case, you can, you can see whether it is a generator, motor, or whether it is a switch, any, any device, there will be some outer case which will cover the inner, inner conducting part of the device. So the outer case of the device will protect the device and help the device to have insulation from the supply. So if you see the supply, there is a circuit breaker connected at the very beginning. What is the reason the circuit breaker is connected? So that if there is some fault, over voltage, or due to the heavy transient phenomena, the circuit breaker may operate and break the circuit to protect the appliance and the person who is working with the device. So in this case, uh, the resistance represent any household or industrial uh, devices, which is uh, holding maybe a three wire system and three wire, maybe one is the line wire, which is carrying the current carrying current, current carrying uh, coil, the earth wire and the neutral wire. Neutral is the return path to the current. So if you put the outer case of the appliances to the ground, 
that is shown by a green here, then the appliance itself is at earth potential. So if there is a fault in the appliance, any person is touching that appliance, the heavy leakage current will flow through the earth. So the appliance itself will be protected. The case will be giving its insulation and the source is protected for the fault current using a circuit breaker and the neutral itself is grounded. So there is an alternate return path for the fault current. So this circuit will help us in understand the basic safety feature of any system and the devices. So the resistance represent the device appliance and it is grounded. The source is also grounded and the neutral is also grounded. So three different safety features has been given in this particular device. So the fuse or a circuit breaker will prevent the thermal overloading when the heavy current is flowing. So due to the heat, the circuit breaker will operate and the circuit breaker will break the system. And the protective casing around the appliance will prevent the person touching the exposed wires and coming in electrical contact. So both protective uh, casing as well as circuit breaker as well as earthing is the example of earthing electrical safety. Now you see, uh, we have been using a three prong plug every time we are using some electrical appliance, whether it is a fridge, whether it is a washing machine or even the mobile uh, charger. So it is a three prong plug. What does it happen? How these help us in protecting us or the device from the fault? So the source which is connected with a circuit breaker and it's neutral is earthed. So that is a one level of protection. And if you see the plug, the three plug which is coming of the three prong, uh, three prong plug, the plug which is thicker and taller is connected with the white or the neutral through the ground. This means that when you enter the plug and if there is a fault, so this plug when you enter and if there is a fault, then the thicker uh, conductor will first come in contact with the ground so that the fault current flows through it. Then if there is a no fault, then only this plug will connect with the device. So no, in the normal operation, uh, there is if there is a no fault, then the thicker or the bigger uh, prong has no role to play. But if there is a fault, then it will create uh, the fault current to earth. It will flow the fault current to the earth. The other two uh, conductors, if you take one is uh, the line conductor and another one is a neutral conductor that is the return even the neutral is also earthed so the plug between the switching source and the appliance also protect the system now let us see a person who is uh, working somewhere uh, in the kitchen or in the washroom and he is holding one the pipe through which the water is flowing and he's trying to turn on a device. Device may be the geyser or it may be the washing machine which is connected to the supply. So if the earth or ground connection is broken, if there is a broken earth connection, means the outer, uh, the outer surface, or outer casing of the device, if it is broken, then person will get a heavy shock under such condition because the outer portion of the device which is used to protect the device from earth fault current is being broken. The appliance may operate normally in this situation. Although the appliance is operating normally, but the person who is holding this appliance due to the broken ground, he is getting an electric shock. On the other hand, if you see that if there is a proper casing of the ground and the person is holding that device, then what will happen? It will happen is that due to the proper earth or ground, the circuit breaker here will trip and it will force to repair of the appliances. So this will break and the appliance may be repaired if there is a 
fault current but the person who is holding that appliance will be protected he will not get over voltage or current through the devices also we know that ac current will have some induced emf that is electromotive force whenever we are using some appliance under the ac condition so there is some induced emf this induced emf is also very dangerous which can lead to the uh, the person and will lead to the fault so you can see that case of emf is there and the person is holding the appliance there is a broken uh, ground wire so the leakage current is flowing and this, there is also the ac supply is there so induced emf is there this induced emf is breaking the circuit breaker and the emf uh, electromotive force voltage is very large enough to cause electric shock to a person and the case is grounded the induced emf is kept near zero potential so that is the main reason why we uh, arthered the outer surface of the device outer enclosure of the device so that the induced emf is also protected now one important apparatus if you see the ground fault interrupter a ground fault interrupter is a device which is being shown here it is comparing the current between the live conductor and the neutral wire and it will trip when the difference exceed a safe value so a person who is working with a device and if there is a fault so what do this ground fault interrupter will do ground fault interrupter will measure that if there is a difference in the potential or the current difference is there between the live wire and the neutral wire and if it is exceeding the safe value then in that case it will come into picture and it will come into operation and it will trip the system and it will protect the person who is working with the device so in that case the leakage current here will flow a hazardous path that could have been prevented by an intact earth or ground wire so ground fault interrupter is a very important device in such appliances where there is a chance of fault especially in the rotating machine where there is a rotating part so ground fault interrupter will play an important role to protect the person so ground fault interrupter is comparing the current in the two wires whether it is a line wire and a neutral wire using the principle of induced emf in the same coil so both will be inducing an emf so here you can see there is a circuit breaker shown and there is some uh, ground fault interrupter which is having a sensing coil and iron frame so there is a magnetic field which is being induced in the iron ring and the sensing coil is basically sensing and signal and the circuit breaker uh, signal is being given so the current are equal then they will induce equal but opposite emf if the fault is not there and current are equal they will induce equal emf but in opposite direction and there is one important device which is known as the isolation transformer so apart from ground fault interrupter in substation specially we use isolation transformer as the name suggest it will be isolating the two live parts of the device isolation transformer is nothing but one is to one transformer the number of turns in the primary winding and number of turns in the secondary winding will be equal but both will be at different potential so isolation transformer uh, what do we do it is putting a large resistance between the original voltage source so here you have the voltage source the isolation transformer is putting a heavy resistance or a large resistance between the original source and the device which the person is operating and is preventing a complete circuit between them so the high voltage part of the system is disconnected from the low voltage part of the system which is the device and the isolation transformer is creating a large resistance so the person will get uh, protected when uh, the source if there is a fault occurring in the system i'll get back to you if you have any doubt so that i can know
you would like to ask anything at this point hello yes uh, sir what are the safety precaution to be followed while handling of this uh, faulty current mm. can you repeat what are the steps to be taken no no safety what are the safety procedure to be followed while handling of this faulty uh, uh, current okay uh, so that is the topic uh, we have taken if there is a fault occurring in the system due to any appliance fault or if there is a source fault then first we need to check whether all the interconnecting device whether it is a circuit breaker the uh, outer surface of the appliance or the casing everything is insulated or not then only the earth fault can then then only the heavy fault can be uh, protected otherwise not if there is a electric shock then the person will get directly Uh, a, a heavy potential difference between the two feet that is we have studied the step potential and the touch potential and there will be increase in the potential now once he is getting that effect after that uh, the chances of him to be protected depends upon what is the duration for which he was under the influence of that device and how much resistance his body is giving because person to person also resistance is different one person resistance another person resistance is not the same so the impact of electricity impact of voltage is not the same for one person to the other person so we need to check whether uh, the connecting devices are all at this uh, right potential or not any leakage current is flowing in the device or not from time to time so that is conditioning condition monitoring and diagnostic of electrical appliances Uh, so i hope i'm clear yeah, just yes, just one previous slide sir i just want previous okay. slide previous slide yes yeah in this uh, below uh, isolation transformer uh, there mm -hmm. is a uh, uh, more resistance the heat resistance material is added and mm -hmm. after that the appliance is there in that in such condition the uh, consumption of electricity is more as compared to uh previous one or less uh, safety material as uh, safety aspects what we seen previously uh, the electrical consumption is higher in this uh, uh, isolation transformer or not that is the thing obviously wherever wherever the resistance is high there uh, electricity voltage drop will be there and electricity consumption will be more but we have to understand that this isolation transformer we are not going to use for our household appliances whether we are using a tv fridge washing machine geyser anything there this isolation transformer we is not uh, going to be applied this isolation transformer will be applied in the substation where you have high voltage apparatus high voltage apparatus uh, whether you are using one transformer to another transformer there is a interconnection between that so you can see that here you have the source and here you have some appliance which is the high uh, maybe a surge resistor or a boosting capacitor anything you have in this side so both the sides are of high voltage in nature so we need to uh, detach the first part with the second part with the isolation transformer whose resistance is more so obviously the voltage drop will be more but uh, when Uh, we are using such a high level of the voltage and uh, the substation is also a very complicated and complex uh, system there we need to protect the human beings who are working in that particular substation and hence isolation transformer we have to bear that particular cost so electricity consumption will be there but we have to bear that because uh, we are in such a like sophisticated and complex environment we are working and the person need to be protected understood understood thank you any other question okay uh, let us carry forward then so we have understood a brief overview of electrical safety devices and how to protect what precaution we need to take now we will discuss the earthing system adopted 
in the country and various other countries over all over world so the different types of earthing system are basically grouped under five different categories these are known as tns tncs tt system tnc earthing system it system now what does this word means so these words has been given or these a uh, group of alphabets has been given for the earthing system which indicate that t stands for earth it has been taken from the french word terre so there is a french word terre which means earth and hence t indicates the earth n indicates the neutral the s indicates the separate and c indicates the combined and i indicate the isolate so the earthing system being adopted for various countries under different scenario whether it is a substation or whether it is some industry or whether it is some uh, appliances so earthing system that need to be adopted will come under this five different type of earthing system okay and if you talk about the different countries like india uh, if we see the voltage that we are using either it is a single phase voltage or whether it is a three phase voltage that is 230 by 415 single phase three phase generally the earthing system that we use for the low voltage system is the tns system tns system means where you have a earth where you have a neutral and whether you want to separate the different appliances so india we are using tns system whereas other countries if you see germany germany belgium spain france these all countries the level of the voltage is different uh, whether it is a single phase or a three phase voltage and the adopted earthing system is also different they they have adopted a different earthing system for the voltage for which they the appliances are being used like in japan if you see the voltage that they use is 100 volt for single phase and 200 volt for three phase and they are using a tt system whereas if you see the other country like great britain there the voltage is 240 and 415 and they adopted tt system and tnc system so if we talk about india then we are using tns system for the earthing phenomena so we will see the basic difference between these five different systems what are their uh, connection and how they are providing earthing so the first system which india adopted is the tns system and t stands for the earth terre the word terre has been taken n stands for neutral and s stands for separate so if you see a three phase system indicated by l1 l2 and l3 the three lines in some uh, adoption they says r y and b that is a red yellow and blue uh, which are having a 120 degree phase difference and there is a neutral wire and there is some protective earth so the generator or a transformer any device which is a three phase device if you see the source side the source is connected to earth and the load side or the three lines if you see it is connected with a consumer and the system itself is connected with a tns earthing system where you can see the earth is also there you can see the neutral is also there and there is a separate between the three wires of the line so neutral is separated with the earth and the protective earth is also there so protective earth and neutral are separate conductor here that are connected together only near the power source hence this system of earthing is known as tns system earthing you have a separate conductor for earth as well as neutral they are only connected near the power source whereas the other type of system that is the tncs system if you see that the part of the system use a combined pen conductor which is at some point split up into separate pe and n lines so here you can see that Uh, the protective earth conductor is connected with the neutral conductor somewhere at the between the lines but in tns system the protective earth neutral and earth are connected only near the source it is connected only near the source but it is not connected in the between 
but tncs system there is a uh, part of a system connected uh, in the combined pn conductor and some point it is splitting up as pea separately and n separately the combined pn conductor typically occurs between the substation and the entry point into the building and earth and neutral are separated in the service head so where we use pn uh, system it is generally when you are at the substation entry point of the building or whether the earth and neutral has to be separate from the service head in such type of system we use tncs system earthing whereas the tt system are thing if you see in the tt system the protective earth connection for the consumer is provided by a local earth electrode and there is another independent installed at the generator so you can see the earth the generator or the transformer is connected but the consumer who is using any appliance his earth is different from the source earth so there are no earth wire between the two so whether it is a generator earth or the consumer earth both earth is different so it is known as tt system earthing whereas the pn system earthing if you see a combined pen conductor fulfill the function of both pe and n conductor so pn conductor is common here uh, you cannot see a neutral separate the pn is taking the protective earth also as well as the neutral also and the transformer or a generator three phase and the consumers are connected directly from the three lines as well as the neutral so tn system the there is no separate uh, neutral wire it system network which is known as isolate terre from the french word is in the electrical distribution system no connection to earth at all you do not require a earth in it system and has only a high impedance connection so you will see the it system will be used very less in certain application only where the earth is not present and if you compare all these earthing system with respect to their characteristic you will find that these systems are being used depending upon what is the requirement or what is the application like if you have a earth fault loop impedance characteristic then tt system will give high it system is the highest tns is low tnc is low and tncs is also low so if you have a fault earth fault loop impedance though in that case it system because earth is not there obviously the fault current will be very high and there will not be any protection in that particular system rcd rcd indicate uh, residual current devices if there is a leakage current flowing uh, when there is a fault then in that case if the earth is not there and the leakage current is flowing so obviously the tt and it system uh, will be hampered a lot as compared to the other one so rcd is preferred yes the answer for tt and it system you need a rcd device residual current device you required because earth is not there so if you need earth electrode at the site yes earth electrode is site is required for tt and it but other system tns tnc and tnc system you don't require earth at the site similarly other phenomena i'm not going into very detail in this you can just see that depending upon the characteristic whether it is a safety issue whether it is electromagnetic interference safety risk we use uh, depending upon the uh, characteristic what type of earthing system we need to adopt different earthing system will have different connection schemes and due to this connection scheme certain advantage will be there and certain limitations will be there and those uh, advantages and limitations we have to choose which we need to give more uh, priority to that so coming to the residual current device because uh, you know that leakage current will be flowing when there is a fault current so uh, do uh, we can uh, uh, avoid that fault current using some residual current device so residual current device is basically an electrical safety device obviously it is a safety device because it is protecting the leakage current and it will quickly break the circuit when when it will break the circuit when there is a leakage current 
So if there is a flow of the leakage current through the ground due to the fault condition, then the safety device which is breaking the circuit is known as residual current device. So residual current devices comes under different names. One is only known as residual current device, RCD, residual current circuit breaker, RCCB. If you see in the market, uh, purchase these devices, they comes under different names, whether it is a residual current device, residual current circuit breaker. We have already seen ground fault circuit interrupter. So these are also the residual current device. So different names, depending upon different uh, applications or different uh, the architecture of the device. So their uh, sensitivity, if you talk about this safety device to the leakage current that acts as a switch of uh, the electricity within 10 to 15 milliseconds if there is an electrical fault. Means when the fault is there and residual current is flowing, the residual current devices are very sensitive and 10 to 50 millisecond is the time which it will take to cut off the electricity from the system. So RCD is designed uh, to protect against the risk of electrocution and fire caused by earth fault. So whenever there is a fault, uh, there is a leakage which is flowing from the source to the earth, then the residual current device uh, will disconnect or it will isolate the source from the device and risk of electrocution or if there is a fire when the level of the voltage is very high or level of the current is very high, it will be protected. So when you have a circuit breaker installed at home, what does the circuit breaker do? It only protect against overloading and short circuit, no electrocution. So circuit breaker cannot help a person to get electrocution effect. It can only protect against overloading and short circuit phenomena. So circuit breaker is different from a residual current device says. So RCD device, that is a residual current device, if you are having additional over current protection, which is integrated in the same device, it is known as RCBO, residual current over current protecting device. So both over current as well as the residual current, both are being protected. So the over current measuring or the sensor, it is being installed in the same device itself and hence the new name has been given as RCBO, over current device. Now, if you see the functioning of these RCD device and how this RCD device is operated when there is a fault current or whether there is a leakage current to the earth. So usually in the market, if you go to purchase this RCD device, it will look like this. So the internal circuit, if you see, there is the internal circuit or the basic circuit will look like this. So how do this RCD devices function when there is a fault current or a leakage current? Let us see that. So generally RCD will have some iron core. You can see here, there is an iron core shown uh, with the help of a cylinder, iron core is there. Now, when the electricity is entering from the source, then RCD, it is taking through a switch gear and a coil around the iron core. So live electricity, which is the normal electricity without a fault, it is entering the RCD through a switch gear and a coil, which is surrounding the iron core. You can see that there is a trip coil. This is the coil and this is the main coil, which is coming. So the electricity will create a magnetic field in the coil because you know that whenever uh, the current carrying coil is there, it will produce a magnetic field accordance with biot sabot law. So the current being present and the iron, which is a ferromagnetic material. So what happened is that magnetic field will be produced. Now the neutral current, which is flowing back into the RCD through a coil, will wired opposite to the live wire. So there are two wires, one is the line, another is neutral. And the neutral wire uh, current uh, carrying uh, the connection is opposite to that of the live wire when it is connected with the help of an RCD. And hence, there are two opposing magnetic field resulting. One magnetic field is produced due to the live wire current, and another magnetic field is produced due to the 
neutral wire current It's two magnetic magnetic fields are produced which are in opposite direction now these magnetic field what does it do which are in opposite direction so the current which is returning through the neutral wire should equal the current supplied so the two opposing magnetic fields should cancel it each other now for example you have a 20 ampere device so the supply which is flowing through 20 ampere in the live wire should return 20 ampere in the neutral wire so the two current when it is equal and the magnetic field are opposite to each other it means it will cancel out each other but if the two currents are not equal what will happen that is what the device will sense so when the magnetic field is not there without a magnetic field the switch gear won't move means the current in the line live wire and the neutral wire both are same because the current is same magnetic field is opposite and if magnetic field is opposite it will cancel each other and the, there is no net magnetic field and hence the switch gear will not move now the appliance current will continue to flow in the normal operation so the current which is flowing in the normal operation will not be interrupted this because of this rcd because the current which is flowing in the live wire and the neutral wire both are equal and the magnetic field which is produced is cancelling each other and there is no total magnetic field and switch gear is not in operation and the appliance is carrying the normal current now if there is a fault if there is a fault then there will be a leakage current which current will be flowing through the ground in that particular situation what will happen the device current would remain the same so the first coil magnetic field would remain the same because the current which is flowing through the live wire it will keep on flowing and it will produce a magnetic field and the leakage current will flow to the ground and these leakage current will be less in the neutral coil so the current 20 ampere which was flowing for an example in the live wire will not be same 20 ampere in the neutral wire the current will be little bit less because of the leakage current and hence the neutral current will produce a magnetic field which will not cancel the magnetic field of the live wire so magnetic field there will be imbalancing resulting the triggering of the circuit uh, switch gear so the switch gear will be triggered when there is imbalance of the magnetic field imbalance of the magnetic field is resulting due to imbalance of the current in the line wire and the neutral wire and this imbalance is being taken uh, occur due to the fault current or the leakage current now the magnetic field will attract the switch gear iron panel to its iron core and this will disconnect so when there is a leakage current flowing and the magnetic field is imbalancing is occurring it will attract the switch gear iron panel to its iron core and it will disconnect from the source and when it is disconnected from the source then after that there is a reset button given to us that need to be reset the circuit once the fault current is interrupted or it is removed from the network so we have a reset button given in this particular situation so that we can remove the fault and then we can do the reconnection and resetting the network so we were discussing uh, the principles of safety features and uh, we discussed certain aspects of that now let us take the topic methods of earthing we have seen the types of earthing uh, when we when we talk about the types of earthing it is the earthing uh, which is uh, for the system but if you say the devices if we need to earth whether it is a building whether it is a generator or a motor or whether it is any other device what are the different types of earthing which are present that we are going to discuss. So why the earth is very important? Because the earth is most omnipresent conductive surface and it is adopted or it was adopted as the universal standard for all electrical systems. So earth, whether we go anywhere in any of the world, any of the country, all countries have adopted that yes because earth is omnipresent everywhere we will be taking it as the conductive surface and the universal standard will be noting it mm -hmm. so all the appliances uh, which are 
earthed or the grounded it's neutral and to protect the electrical appliances generally the conventional methods are being used for the earthing system so what are the different conventional methods used one is the plate earthing second is the pipe earthing third is the strip earthing and the fourth is the rod earthing so generally these uh, four different types of earthing are being adopted by various countries for uh, earthing their uh, appliances as well as earthing their whole installation or are thing they are building as well so the ground network which is being uh, created under the method of earthing that we are going to discuss so let us take the first one as the plate type earthing so plate type earthing there is an entire network or structure is being created inside the earth and what is the structure is being created if we see in brief generally there is a pit of 19 to 90 cm and it is dug deep around 3 meters in the ground so below the 3 meters in the ground if you see there will be a pit which will be around 90 cm into 90 cm so this is the pit which is being dug and the ground depth if you see it is at 3 meter below the ground so here you can used uh, the plate made up of copper which is having the dimension of 60 cm long 60 cm wide and 3.15 mm thick or otherwise you can use the galvanized iron plate gi plate of 60 cm into 60 cm into 6.3 mm that is a long wide and um, the thick as the main electrode that is being connected to the earth pit and the pipes are taken out from the pit of two uh, two different pipes which are have diameter of 19 mm and 12.7 mm which are added to the plate so these are the pipes which are being taken out and connected to the plate and a funnel is attached so if you see there is a funnel present attached at the top end of the pipe so this is your pipe and through which the funnel is being attached and uh, the copper plate or uh, gi plate is here so this funnel what is the use of this funnel so the funnel which is attached at the top end of the pipe is a diameter of 19 mm so 19 mm funnel is being attached to the pipe and this funnel is being used to put some soil particles moisture and other reconditioning agent which we will be seeing a little bit later then into more deep of the reconditioning agent so the open copper or gi that is a galvanized iron for connection to the earth electrode the wire comes out of the ground via 12.7 mm diameter pipe so there will be a, a funnel and there will be a 12.7 uh, meter diameter pipe which will be coming from it and the funnel uh, will be filled with a layer of sand salt and coal these are the reconditioning agents that are being used and it is in 15 cm each laid around the electrode such a layer is built up up to 90 cm so layers of layers are built with 90 cm depth and sand salt and coal are being used and the rest rest of the pit if you see they are filled with black soil typically 2.5 m and the earth conductor pipe is emerging where the earthing connection is to be made so there from earthing connection need to be made and earth electrode pipe will be coming out so when we talk about the top of the funnel top of the funnel there is a 30 cm into 30 cm cement concrete tank so this is made up of cement and it's a concrete tank and is covered with a lead of a cast of cast iron so this is covered it so we need to cover this cement concrete tank so the earthing is accomplished by transporting the plate to the main switch and from there the earth conductor to the desired location so earth conductor will be taken to the desired location for which the earthing need to be made so generally this type of earthing is used in uh, substations whether it is a generating substation or whether it is a transforming substations there this type of earthing plate type of earthing is basically used now question is why the salt and coal is added to the earthing why we required to add salt and coal 
so the earth electrode is generally surrounded by salt and coal in order to improve the conductivity of the soil we need to improve the conductivity of the soil and this can be improved using salt and coal salt will absorb the soil alkalinity so the alkalinity which is present in the soil the salt will be absorbing and the coal will convert the moisture in the soil into the ashes so whatever the moisture will be present that will be converted to ash and when the conductivity of the ground is high the leakage current can easily enter the ground so if you increase the conductivity obviously the leakage current which flows due to the fault will now enter the ground on the other hand we add water also to the earthing system apart from salt and coal we add water why because when you talk about the summer months then the ground uh, ground become dries out it is very uh, rock solid and uh, the entire moisture which is present in the ground is being dried and hence the conductivity of the ground is diminished so in the previous sentence we have seen that if the conductivity is high then only the leakage current will be flowing through the ground but if the conductivity of the ground is diminished because of the summer month or the heat that the ground will dry out hence to increase the soil moisture water is poured into the earthing through the funnel so we have seen a funnel and through that you will be putting some water which is not, nothing but a moisture adding to the soil so that the conductivity increase and the leakage current uh, can easily flow through the ground the earthing funnel is covered with a lid now there is a funnel which is open it has to be covered with a lid and the lid is made up of cast iron so that the pouring water into the earring is not obstructed what happened is that apart from water you will be having some uh, extra contaminations which will fill the funnel we don't want the lid of the funnel to be uh, choked because of these contaminations hence it has to be covered with cast iron whereas the other type of earthing is the pipe type earthing what is pipe type earthing so in pipe type earthing you will be digging a pit 70 cm long 70 cm wide and 3.75 m deep in the ground and then a gi pipe we have used plate there now we are using pipe so pipe is made up of gi that is galvanized iron and it is a earth electrode whose diameter is 38 mm and a length is 2 m which is buried in that that particular pit and the entire surface of the pipe is perforated with 12 mm holes separated by 7.5 cm so holes are being made on the pipe and there are 12 mm holes and it is separated by 7.5 cm the electrode has a 19 mm diameter reducing socket to which are connected to 12.7 mm diameter gi pipes so these are all about the construction and hence at the apex of the 19 mm pipe there will be a funnel now you can see there is also a funnel here which is again being used for putting the water so that the conductivity of the earth is increased uh, in the summer season so the earth lead conductor is connected to the earth electrode by a pipe with a diameter of 12.7 mm and the objective is to avoid the damaging the earth lead in any way we do not want the earth lead to be damaged hence sand and coal are layered at a distance of 15 to 15 cm from each electrode layer so how many electrodes may be used sand and coal will be put into that and the pit above the electrode is consequently filled with soil the earth conductor which is lifted from a 12.7 mm diameter pipe is transported 60 cm below the ground to the earthing location so we will be having a 30 cm into 30 cm cement concrete tank constructed around the funnel has a lead made up of cast iron and it is utilized for low and medium voltage earthing installations so plate type earthing we were using uh, at the substations and uh, we were using at the generating stations also but here the pipe type earthing we are using in low and medium voltage earthing installation where the voltage is either low or medium so two different types of earthing we have studied now coming to the strip earthing strip earthing if you see it is a process of uh, transmission of current from the electrical appliance to the ground through a metallic strip of low resistance 
So we are not using a plate or a pipe, rather we are using a strip. The reasons are same. The earthing reasons are always the same. Whether you have to avoid the leakage current, you have to avoid the fault current and it has to go to the ground. So here in this case, we are using a metallic strip of very low resistance and the strips have a diameter of six, six mm and are galvanized in a hot dipped solution. So we are putting in a hot dipped solution so that galvanization of strip can be done and it is a diameter of six mm. These strips are installed in the ground with a depth of 0.5 mm in horizontal trenches. So a lot of trenches are being uh, built uh, on the ground and uh, the depth of these trenches 0.5 meter where these strips are placed and these strips are galvanized uh, with a hot dip solution and the strips are made up of copper uh, which are used for grounding current through the process of earth stripping. So earth stripping is the process it will go to the earth and grounding current will flow. So copper earthing strips are so resistant to corrosion. We know that whenever we use copper as a material uh, in the strip, it will be resistant to corrosion. Corrosion will not be there. If you use iron, then obviously corrosion will be there. So it is better to use copper. And we know that copper is a very good conductor of electricity. So conductivity is also very high and they will last longer and offer a very better voltage transient protection. So the strips are usually made up of copper. Uh, it will protect the corrosion as well as conductivity is high and transient will be protected. The strip or thing provides a pathway that allows easy flow of current from faulty electrical appliance to the ground. So whenever there is a fault being uh, a highly conductive device, the copper, the fault current will be flowing to the ground and the strips are further covered. Now the copper is open and it has to be covered with a good quality insulating material so that the metallic strips can be prevented from further corrosion of the nature of the soil. Because it is present in the soil, a uh, lot of moisture will be there. So we need to protect this corrosion effect and hence some form of insulation has to be there in the strip. Now, when we talk, about the other form of uh, earthing, that is the rod earthing. The rod earthing is one of the earthing uh, which we have apart from plate earthing, pipe earthing, strip earthing. In rod earthing, what we do is that uh, using a hand or a pneumatic hammer, we take a, we take a hammer and a pneumatic or hand, we create a 12.5 mm diameter solid copper rod and 16 mm diameter solid galvanized iron or steel rod anything or it can be a hollow section of 25 mm GI pipe. The length will be 2.5 mm and it will be driven vertically into the earth. So these uh, rod uh, which are made up of either copper or GI pipes, they will be put into the earth and it will be hammered so that it goes down the earth. And these uh, multiple rod sections are hammered atop one another. So it is not only one rod, it is a multiple rod sections. These are hammered atop one another and it will increase uh, the embedded length of the electrode below the ground, which is sometimes uh, referred to achieve the desired earth resistance. So the rod uh, which are inset and they are put into the earth uh, in inside and it protect the earth from the leakage current, whatever it is flowing, it will easily go to the ground because these rods are again conducting in nature. And these earthing technique is generally suitable for sandy regions where you have the sandy regions, there only this earthing technique is suitable. And the method of earthing is very cause effective because no excavation is necessary. So uh, if you see uh, generally in rocky regions where a uh, lot of excavation has to be done, there we cannot use. But in sandy regions where uh, the hammer can go very easily uh, the soil, then we can use this rod earthing process. So it will protect the leakage current again. Uh, the Whatever may be the earthing, the main idea of these earthing are the same. We have to protect the heavy leakage current, uh, which are flowing due to the fault and it has go to the earth. Now, if the conductivity is high, then only the leakage current will go to the earth. If the conductivity is low, then the leakage current will not go to the earth. Hence, we need to put a high conductive material 
for the earthing process. Okay, uh, I'll go back and ask you some doubt if you have regarding any earthing techniques. So the salt and the coal is used, whether it is required to be replaced frequently or it is at one time? Yes, depending upon the weather condition. So what is the weather condition you have? Uh, depending upon that, you need to uh, put that. Because what happens is that, suppose there is a generator or a transformer that we are using, uh, there is some heat also there and the temperature of the environment is also there. And because of that, we need to check always. And how to check? We need to check, measure the earth resistance. Once we measure the earth resistance and realize that the earth resistance is good enough, then we need not, we can be assured. If the earth resistance has uh, like uh, increase or decrease, then we need to take necessary step. So these, whatever uh, sand or coal or water we are adding, that also required a uh, experiment to be conducted on the earth soil. And depend that after doing that experiment, after doing the measurement, we have to decide whether we need to put that moisture or uh, soil, uh, soil or uh, coal or as dust anything. We'll we'll take your uh, one topic. You will understand that in uh, other details. And how the resistance is calculated then? Yeah. So there is a device which is known as meager, which uh, which measure the resistance of the soil. And we have a last topic that only how to measure the resistance of a soil. You need to measure the resistance of the soil from time to time. If the resistance of the soil is changing, you need to take appropriate step. That is putting moisture, that is putting this uh, many uh, reconditioning agent. So what are the reconditioning agent like a bentonite or fly ash that are reconditioning agents. So that reconditioning agent we need to put. Uh, so we have in the coming uh, slides, we will see the reconditioning agent and how to measure the soil resistance. So this topic is important, yes. Anything else? Okay, so let us take the discussion further. So we have seen that uh, the earthing system, whether it is a TT system, TN system, or IT system. So the three-phase system will have either star-connected network or a delta-connected network. So generally in the star connected network, you will be having a neutral point, which is a common point between the three phases. This neutral point need to be authored so that you can protect the device. So three phase device, you have three phases and these three phases are intersecting and pointing a neutral. The neutral, if you earth, then you will protect the device. So what is neutral earthing? What are these methods and advantage? Let us like to see. So let us take an example of any device, whether it is a transformer, generator, or any machine. It will have a neutral point, which is a point of connection of the three phases. And these three points which are connected, it has to be earthed so that the reference point is at zero volt. If you compare these two uh, diagrams, on the left hand side, there is an isolated neutral. So if you see the neutral point here, this is not connected with earth. Whereas in the second case, the neutral point is earthed. So the neutral grounding is very important. This will help to protect the devices, uh, which is having in the form of a star or a uh, new, uh, having a uh, star in the form of a transformer generator or a machine. And this neutral point, if not earthed, no earthing may be also of a different nature. This earthing not a straight wire that you are connecting the neutral point with the ground. These are different types of earthing. So what are the different types of uh, earthing the neutral? So you can have a solid earthing. Solid earthing means you take a, you take a conductor, uh, you connect the neutral to the earth. That is the effective grounding or the solid earthing. But if you connect, the earth with the help of a resistance, then in that case, it is known as the resistive earthing. If you connect the earth and the neutral point with a reactor, reactor is nothing but an inductor, then in that case, it is known as a reactance earthing. If 
the neutral point is connected with a Peterson coil, then it is known as a resonant earthing. So these are the four different methods of the neutral point of a device, whether it is a transformer, generator, or a machine, then connecting it to the earth to maintain it at zero potential. Now, what will happen? Actually, this neutral is earthed. So if there is a fault coming from the line, then due to the earth, this fault current will flow to the ground. Now, if the fault current is moving to the ground, obviously the three phases will have the same impedance. If the same impedance it is there, then it will be balanced system. We don't want unbalancing. If unbalancing occur, then there is a problem. So we want the system to be balanced and to create a balance, we need the neutral to be earthed. So these four different types of earthing, we want to discuss to how they are being taken care of. Now, uh, coming to the advantage of neutral uh, grounding, if you do the neutral grounded, then what happens is that the voltage of the phases are being limited to line to ground voltage rather than line to line voltage. Because if this is ground, then the potential between one line and the ground is limited to line to ground voltage. If it is not grounded, then we have to measure the voltage between the two lines. And you know that line voltage is always more than the phase voltage by root three times. So line voltage is root three times the phase voltage for a star connected system. So we need to produce the line to ground voltage, not line to line voltage. That is one of the advantage. Second advantage is if there is a surge voltage, surge means over voltage, due to the arcing ground, it will be eliminated. Means if you have a earthed system and there is a change in the voltage due to the capacitive action or switching uh, operation, then that switching operation will create an arc, which is a leakage current. That leakage current will be eliminated because if it is earthed. When we talk about the over voltage, over voltage due to lightning phenomena, then there will be a discharge and that discharge will always uh, will move to the ground if the neutral is earthed. So lightning is again uh, a very uh, disadvantage phenomena which will result in over voltage. So a person who is operating with a device with this transformer and generator, he has to be protected. So any person or the equipment need to be protected. If the neutral is earthed, obviously the person and uh, the equipment will be protected. And if you talk about the service reliability of the instrument or the uh, entire system, it is also obviously improved. So there are many advantages of keeping the neutral point to earth. You, whatever the technique we are going to use, whether it is a solid earthing, resistance reactance, or Peterson coil earthing, every uh, earthing will give this advantage. Now, why we adopted different type of neutral grounding techniques? It depends upon the application. It depends upon the advantage that we are going to take. So let us see one by one uh, these different earthing system and how this earthing is being taken place. So first one is the solid earthing. Solid earthing means that the neutral is grounded directly with a uh, conducting material, whether it is a wire or a rod, it is directly connected. So neutral directly connected to ground through a conductor of very negligible resistance or a reactance. So the conductor which is connecting this neutral to the earth, its resistance or reactance will be negligible. Then only we can say that, yes, uh, the grounding is of solid earthing. Now you see what will happen if there is a fault. Fault uh, is indicated by F. So if there is a fault, then what happens? The current which is flowing in the three phases will be different. So IA, IB, and IC indicates the three currents which are flowing in the three phases. And these uh, three currents which are flowing in the three phases now, what happens if the neutral is our thing? Let us see. So the positive sequence impedance, what is positive sequence impedance? Any doubt here? Somebody was asking something. Okay, no doubt. So positive sequence impedance 
which is resulting from the positive sequence current which is flowing in the system positive sequence current means the current under the fault condition is having the same phase uh, as the phase of the original current in that case the system is greater the positive sequence of the system z1 is greater or equal to the zero sequence re resistance of that particular system when uh, the system is uh, neutralized grounded and the positive sequence reactance if you are talking about that is three times greater than or equal to zero sequence reactance this we have studied in power system uh, in detail uh, the reason of positive sequence impedance negative sequence impedance and zero sequence impedance or the reactance and how uh, this plays an important role when the thing is there oh, sorry when the fault is there so when the fault occurs then the system converts from a balanced system to unbalanced system balanced system is when the three phases will have equal magnitude of the impedance if the three phases are having different impedances due to the different current flowing then in that case uh, what will happen is that the system will become unbalanced now if the system is solidly earthed positive sequence impedance will be greater than the zero sequence resistance and positive sequence reactance will be three times greater than or equal to zero sequence reactance now fault occur in the system in addition to the charging current the power source also feed the fault current so the current which was already flowing that is the charging current now the fault current is also flowing so two different currents are adding up together fault current as well as the charging current from the source now the solidly neutral grounded system it is necessary that the ground fault current should not exceed 80% of the three phase fault so under which condition uh, we can use this solidly earthed system so in order to use this solidly earthed system one uh, limitation is there that the ground fault which is associated with the different because we know that different type of faults are either it will be line to ground fault or it will be line to line fault or it will be three phase fault so there are three type of faults and out of this the line to ground fault should not exceed 80% of the three phase fault if it is exceed uh, exceeding then we cannot use this solidly neutral system so this is one of the uh, condition that need to be aware uh, whenever we are using a solidly earthed system so usually what we do is that we keep the fault current within the safe limit if you do not keep the fault current within the safe limit and then in that case this uh, solid earthing system will not be useful to us whereas when we talk about the resistance earthing what is resistance earthing the neutral point of the system or the device you are connecting it to the ground with the help of a resistance now on not only one resistance it may be one or more resistance because the devices can be having more voltage depending upon what is the level of the voltage you are using you have to put uh, how many resistances whether in uh, parallel to and connected to the neutral point so it will decrease the arcing grounding risk and it will permit the ground fault protection so the protection will be there because the resistance is there and this resistance will help the current fault current to flow through the ground and it will protect the system from transient over voltage so over voltage may occur due to switching action or over voltage may occur due to uh, the lightning surges so the resistance which you have connected either one or many its value used in the grounding system should neither be very high or not very low if the resistance is very high the value is very high what will make the system is ungrounded it will believe that the system is ungrounded because you know that your resistance is high r is tending to infinity it is a open circuit so the system is ungrounded if the resistance is very low if the resistance is very low you know r equal to 0 the system is short circuit so that is solidly grounded so whether you keep r very high or r very low both are dangerous so we should not go to the extremities and hence proper uh, resistance value we need to use for the resistance earthing system so the value that is being chosen by this uh, resistance is such that the ground fault current is being limited 
and still sufficient ground fault flow permit the operation of fault protection because if the ground fault is not flowing through the ground then there is no purpose served the purpose will be served only when the fault or the fault which leads to the leakage current flows directly to the ground but it should also protect against the transient over voltage so resistance values to be chosen for this resistance are thing it should be adequate enough so that both the phenomena can be taken care of so general uh, notion is that the ground fault may be limited up to 5% to 20% of that which occur through the three phase line so whenever there is a ground fault it will be limited by 5 to 20% of the three phase line fault now the next uh, system that we have is the reactance earthing so we have seen the solid earthing we have seen the resistance earthing now instead of a resistance if you put a inductor inductor is basically a reactor so a reactance is inserted between the neutral and the ground point and this reactance will limit the fault current now how this reactance will limit the fault current it will minimize the over voltage the over voltage that is being taken place uh, due to the transient phenomena and the ground fault current uh, which is flowing in the reactor should not be less than 25% of the three phase fault so you have you must have been observing that uh, when i am discussing this type of earthing we are putting a standard of the three phase fault so three phase fault is my benchmark so i am taking the standard to three phase fault and depending upon what is the maximum three phase fault current flows depending upon that we can choose the value of r or x because from experience we know that what is the uh, ground fault current will be associated with the particular device whether it will be 8% or whether it will be 25% if it is uh, less then we can go for resistance or thing if it is more the rest about 25% of the three phase fault then we can go for reactance type of earthing so this is considerably more than the minimum current desirable in resistance grounded system so resistance grounded system the current you have seen that 8% or 10% for the three phase fault but in reactance grounding always you required the current which is more than the resistance grounded system so depending upon the application uh, you have to put the the neutral point to be grounded whether it is with a resistance or with a reactance now the final grounding system that we are going to discuss or for with of the neutral is using the peterson coil so peterson coil is basically known as the resonant grounding now why the peterson coil is known as the resonant grounding we will come to know this so here what happened is that in peterson coil you will be having one iron core so iron core is there and this iron core is basically a reactor which is connected between the neutral point and ground terminal of a transformer so you can see that three inductors are being shown so this is a transformer uh, and these uh, transmission lines or the transformer whatever you say its neutral point is connected with a coil and that is known as the peterson coil or the resonant grounding system now the limit that the capacitance earth fault current that flows when the ground fault occur in the line occurs so this peterson coil will limit the current that is the uh, flowing through the capacitive earth we know that uh, whenever there is a charging current carrying coil and there is a earth so between that there is air and this air uh, acts as a capacitor or a dielectric so the fault current that flows through the capacitance earth will be limited uh, when it will be flowing the through the ground now if you see the coil is equipped with tapping if you can see that there are different tappings uh, present in the peterson coil so peterson coil is having different tappings and that can be matched to the system capacitance so system capacitance if you see what is the capacitance of the system and the capacitance uh, which occur due to the tapping of the peterson coil that has to be matched so reactance is chosen 
So this reactance, whatever will be chosen from the Peterson coil will be so that the current flowing through the reactor is equal to the same line charging current. So whatever the charging current is flowing in the capacitive uh, conduct capacitance, then that capacitive current and the current which has to flow with the Peterson coil uh, through that will be the same and uh, would lead to line to ground fault. So the reactance value will be chosen so that the current flowing through the reactor is equal to the small line charging current that would flow to the line to ground fault. Now, once this fault has occurred, this is a line to ground fault because one line is associated, the charging current is flowing, this charging current is very small and this charging current and the current uh, of the tapping of the Peterson coil will has to be equal, matched. Then only it will be good enough for the protection. Now it reduces the transient fault which occurred due to lightning and also minimize the single line to ground voltage drop. So whatever the lightning fault has taken place, it will be minimizing the transient phenomena. Transient means what? Transient means a very small duration fault. So a fault which has, uh, ha has occurred for a very small duration of a time which has increased the voltage that is lightning. And these generally occur when there is a voltage drop because of single line to ground fault. So when, uh, when this uh, line to ground fault has occurred, it has become a short circuit to this fault current. Now, if you understand from the KVL KCL uh, equation, what happened when the fault current has taken place? So when the line to ground fault has taken place in phase B, there are three phases, R, Y, and B, and the fault has taken place in phase number B, then the voltage of this phase will be zero. This uh, voltage is zero because it is a short circuit directly connected to the ground. Now, due to the fault, what happened to the other two phases, R and Y? The other two phases, the voltage will be varying. It will increase because overall, the sum of the three voltages need to be zero. Vr plus Vy plus Vb has to be zero under a normal scenario. But when the fault has occurred in the B phase and the B phase has become zero voltage, then R and Y phase voltage will increase because of the fault in the B phase. Now, if we apply the KCL equation uh, in the charging current phenomena, we know that charging current phenomena will be summation of two currents. One is the current which is coming from the R phase and the current which is coming from the Y phase. Because B phase, there will be no current because already it is grounded. So we don't require a current from B phase, only uh, the R phase and the Y phase. And we know that current is nothing but from Ohm's law, the voltage divided by the impedance or the reactance. And voltage is a phase voltage. So it should be root three times the line voltage. Hence, uh, if ICR and ICY has to be equal, we can put what is the value of IC that will be three times VP by XC. So IC is equal to IL, no ground current will be there. If the line current is equal to the capacitive current, ground current will not be there. And there will be no tendency of arcing ground to occur. So arcing means uh, a sudden corona effect. So you do not have a arcing phenomena to ground. And hence the arc resistance is reduced to a small value that it is usually self-extinguishing. Self-extinguishing means you do not require any external means by which this arcing has to be removed. The arcing is being removed from the system with a self-extinguishing feature. So the ground fault neutralizer, which is the Peterson coil, is known as the arc suppression coil. So Peterson coil is known as the ground fault neutralizer, arc suppression coil, or the resonant grounded system. And the Peterson coil is rated in such a way that it is for the short time, about five minutes, and designed to carry a rated current continuously. Because when the fault is not there, it has to carry the current and that current under the full load condition or the rated current condition, it should carry. And where the fault is occurred, it should be short time, very short time for five minutes, it should carry the rated current. So that is uh, all about the neutral grounding. If you have anything to ask, you can ask.
so i hope uh, you have understood that uh, the different types of uh, neutral grounded which is resistance reactance solid or peterson coil these grounding features we use under different scenarios of the fault and the different applications uh, we use it and all of these the basic uh, the requirement is same what is the basic requirement that fault if occurs then it should go to the ground and if the fault is going to the ground then only you will be able to protect the system and unbalancing you can avoid it because the three phases will become unbalanced when your fault is there so i hope uh, there is no question till now okay. where are the areas these are used last two three <clears throat> peterson coil yeah peterson and the earlier two okay so if you see a generator or a motor that you can be grounding with the help of a resistance or a reactance depending upon what is the level of the fault current so if a generator is small or a motor is small like its rated current capacity is only few amperes then you ground it with the help of a resistance if the motor or a generator is of high capacity mba rating then you go for reactance grounding but in substation where you have a transformer which is of mba rating and there is a heavy chance of surge phenomena occurring and transformer you know it is a very costly apparatus in that particular case you should go with a peterson grounding so a peterson grounding uh, you should go when the arcing phenomena is very high so arcing phenomena will be high only when uh, the surge occurring due to the switching or the lightning phenomena will be there because a generator or a motor you will be used uh, in the closed environment condition uh, in industries uh, generally we put the generators or a motors under a shed so lightning doesn't take place in generator or a motor but in the substation if you go there is a transformer or a transmission line they it is in the open environment which is uh, coming directly into the lightning uh, cases so in that particular case uh, you can go for the peterson type of grounding because their arcing will be more and uh, lightning phenomena will be more solidly grounded system you can use for very small uh, system or devices which need to be protected just for uh, creating the earth it, it it is not can be a very costly apparatus it can be a very household appliances any household appliances if you see the neutral it can be grounded but in household we do not use three phase uh apparatus generally in hospitals if you use or in railway lines if you see there some three phase apparatus are being used so there we need to earth the neutral even you see in our uh, lab electrical engineering lab if you see we have many three phase uh, devices like a uh, three phase motor or a three phase generator so those motors and generators are basically used for student uh, lab purpose so they are of kilowatt rating so that kilowatt rating uh, motors and generators they are neutral uh, is being earthed directly with a solid earthing whereas if you use some motor and generator in the industries those are of high rating and they can be uh, grounded with the help of a resistance or a reactance so solid earthing you use for small apparatus resistance earthing and reactance earthing in a situation of the level of the fault current whether it is 8% of the three phase fault or 25% of the three phase fault and if you are having a high chance of arcing lightning phenomena and the device is very costly then you can go for peterson coil earthing okay that means for sophisticated instruments like this thing we can use this resistant type right uh, uh, sophisticated sophisticated, sophisticated instrument and a costly alone you use any Yeah. usually yes if you go a 1 mva transformer if you buy it it costs around 1 crore rupees okay so transformer being a very important instrument and very costly instrument also so transformer protection is very much required if you if you see the entire power system and you have to pick up one of the instrument which need a protection so much then that is a transformer so in transformer protection we use peterson coil obviously okay. in the substation there are three terminologies being used as arcing you use and you said uh, uh, 
uh, star and delta what is the meaning of that we didn't understand completely might be i may have missed some part of it okay so first i'll go for the arcing phenomena see what happened uh, there is a circuit breaker what is the use of a circuit breaker the use of circuit breaker is that whenever there is a fault then you need to disconnect the faulty part with the non faulty part means some part of the system which is uh, operating uh, wisely and some part of the system there is a fault which has to be disconnected from the rest part of the system now there is a circuit breaker so circuit breaker is basically a two point contact so when you open a circuit breaker it is like a switch open switch or close switch you are opening the circuit breaker in a very small period of a time you are opening the circuit breaker so what it happen is that the contact which was at higher potential had suddenly become zero volt because you have opened and make it a closed circuit no current is flowing now since you have opened the circuit breaker the surrounding air whatever you have that is basically air uh, is a non magnetic material the air is non conducting in nature but the potential of the circuit breaker which you have open the potential difference is so high that there is a breakdown in the air you know that the breakdown of the air occurs at 30 kilo volt per millimeter of the uh, surface so in that particular case you will see that there is a certain glow occurring with a violet color that is known as arc arcing arcing means a short arc electric arc which is formed in the air due to opening of the circuit breaker okay second question it was what is star and delta yes so there are two type of system one is single phase and another is three phase system in single phase system you will have only one conductor in three phase system you will have three conductors now these three conductors of the three phase system need to be connected so how you will be connecting these three three conductors you may connect these three conductors like the starting of one conductor will be the end of the other conductor and the end of the other conductor may become the starting of the second conductor so it will form a triangle correct three conductors are there you are connecting the conductor back to back then it will form a triangle that is known as delta if you are connecting the three conductors in such a way that the common point or one end of each conductor is connected with one point like the neutral point that i have shown that is known as the star it looks like a it looks like a y the english alphabet y if you see it is it is having three legs so that is known as star and the delta is basically a triangle of the three conductors so three phases if you connect in the form of a delta or three phases you connect in the form of a star but delta will not have the neutral point star will only have the neutral point because only you required a common point at which the connection need to be made so if the common point is there then only you will be having the star connected system okay okay here yeah. uh, so i hope it is clear right arcing and uh, star delta yeah 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 okay star delta occurs only in the three phase system not in the single phase system okay thank you any question from anybody else okay so let us move ahead so we we saw that the earth plays a very important role in the earthing system or the grounding system now what is the earth made up of earth is basically a soil right and the characteristic of that particular soil is very important when we uh, think of earthing because any fault current or leakage current whatever is there it has to go to the earth if it is going to the earth and the property of the soil is not good enough then in that case earthing will not be good so if you need the earthing to be good you need to have a proper soil so the resistivity of the soil is very important 
Registivity of the soil is the one governing factor by which the fault current will go to the earth, and hence it has to be improved. How the registivity of the soil will change? Registivity of the soil will change depending upon what is the nature of the soil. What are the types of a soil? So the soil which is found in uh, the hilly areas will be different from the soil which is found in the plain area. or the soil which is close to the ocean will be different from the soil which is found in somewhere at the plain area so type of a soil is very important when it when we when we talk about the registivity of the soil second is the moisture content we have seen that in the earthing system through the funnel we are adding water slowly which are the, which is basically to increase the moisture content of the soil because if moisture content of the soil will increase then only the conductivity will increase if conductivity will increase then only the leakage current or the fault current will go perfectly to the ground now third one is the chemical composition of the salt dissolved in the contained water you know whenever you are adding a water Uh, through a funnel to the soil in the earthing system you need to mix that water with some salt because salt plays a very important role we have seen in the earthing system and the concentration of the salt is also very important it is not that so much salt you make it alkaline or little salt you make it less alkaline not like that you have certain composition of the salt that need to be added to the water and this water has to be go to the um, soil so that the moisture content of the soil is having better giving a better conductivity next talking about the temperature so temperature of the material what is the material material is the device which you are using so if you are using suppose for example a transformer and the transformer is earthed so it means that whenever there is a fault in the transformer or some normal current is also flowing it is producing a heating effect so it is increasing the temperature and the surrounding temperature is also there because of heat of the summer season and the conductor which is earthed is made up of copper so it means that all together the temperature of the material is increasing temperature because of current temperature because of the season that is summer and the temperature because of the heating effect produced by the copper conductor which is used for the earthing so this temperature plays a very important role because if temperature is high then what will happen the moisture which is present in the soil will vanish and in that case the soil will lose its conductivity phenomena hence in a regular uh, check up we need to do of the soil whether it is a proper moisture content is there or not or we need to uh, add any salt mixed water or any other uh, reconditioning agent now talking about the quality of the soil uh, in the soil you will see some grain size will be there uh, the sand size will be there how the distribution of this grain is there in the soil that is also playing a very important role and the electrodes that you put it in the soil what is the size and what is the shaping that is also playing a role in uh, changing the registivity of the soil so various factors are there uh, on which the registivity of the soil uh, is governed now if you measure the registivity of different type of soil you will get a different readings like for example if you measure the registivity of a garden soil loamy garden soil you will get somewhere between 500 to 5000 ohm meter whereas if you go for a clay soil it is 800 to 5000 whereas if you go by crystalline rock in that case you will see the registivity is very high whereas for a sand or a gravel it is around 6000 to 10000 so type to type soil you will see that registivity varies so this registivity of the soil plays a important role because we have to make the conductivity better so that the current flows into the soil perfectly now we need to treat the soil so soil treatment is uh, again very important phenomena so how the soil treatment can be done and why it is being done because if the resistance of the soil is high in that case when you put multiple electrodes into the earth so that the leakage current or the earth current flows 
then in that case he may not reduce the earth resistance because we need to reduce the earth resistance because resistance will be less then only current will be more if we need the current to flow more into the earth is the soil resistance has to be high and the electrodes should give a path to the ground the solution that you add in the water is a salt solution and it is used to reduce the soil resistivity around the electrode so wherever you are placing the earth electrode there you add some salt solution you have to pour some salt solution so that it reduce the soil resistivity now what are the different um, conditioning agents that you will be putting you, you can put a sodium chloride calcium chloride you can put sodium carbonate or calcium copper sulfate soft cork and charcoal these are uh, put in right proportion with a salt solution so that the resistivity of the soil is improved where you are putting the earth electrode so nearly what happened is that 90% of the electrode soil resistance is within a 2 meter radius so wherever you are putting a electrode 90% of that resistance of the soil is within 2 meter so if you are excavating a 1 meter uh, diameter ring around the electrode or a rod to a depth of 30 cm applying an artificial soil treatment agent and watering the soil then the earth resistance can be reduced so it is not that uh, you have a earth you will be keep on watering the earth it is not like that you you have a earth electrode which is present in the soil and these earth electrode there will be some excavating you need to do around 1 meter 2 meter and you put a ring around that and you put a depth of 30 cm and then you put this soil treatment agent so soil treatment agent again has to be in the right proportion if the proportion is not right again the if the the result that we need we, we may not get what is the result we need we want the earth resistance to be reduced now to reduce the earth resistance the soil which is surrounding has to be treated with the salt water the charcoal and the soft cork and the other mixture and the techniques work for soil up to 300 ohm meter resistivity so first you measure the soil resistance if the soil resistance is 300 ohm meter only up to 300 ohm meters then only we can go by this method there is soil uh, treatment with some agents if the soil resistivity is more than that this method will not work so the conventional chemical treatment will be insufficient when soil resistivity exceed this value so if your soil resistivity value is very high crossing 300 ohm meter and you are treating the soil with some solution of uh, sodium chloride or calcium carbonate then it will not be beneficial then in that case you have to go by some other method so one method may be a bentonite what is bentonite bentonite is a clay which is having excellent electrical properties and it will be swelling several times its original volume when suspended in water so we use bentonite when uh, we get the soil resistivity higher than the normal situation of normal 300 ohm meters then in that case bentonite uh, we use because its property uh, if uh, when it is seen it is very excellent in terms of electrical properties it will be swelling and to a large volume when suspended with water it will bind the water of crystallization and the water will absorb Uh, during the mixing process will be retained over a longer period of time so the binding property of the water and the absorbing property of the water when bentonite is used then it is very beneficial and not only for a small duration of a time but for a longer period so bentonite suspension in water when used to surround the earth electrode virtually increase the electrode surface area so obviously you know that the formula for resistance is r equal to rho l by a so it means that the area surface area is very important r equal to rho l by a so resistivity will depends upon the area also and if you put a bentonite uh, solution then the virtually we can say that the surface area is going to increase 
and if the surface area going to be increased obviously the resistivity will come down so bentonite around the earth electrode will result in the reduction of the ground resistance by 25 to 30% so 25 to 30% you can have the ground resistance to be decreased with the help of bentonite as a salt solution so again we say that bentonite has a tremendous capacity to absorb water uh, binding process and it can retain over a very long period of time even when we talk about the summer month uh, bentonite suspension will retain the moisture when natural soil dries up because the heat in summer season is very high so all the moisture which is present in the soil will get heated up in that particular case if you are putting a bentonite solution it will be regaining the um, water moisture property of the soil and it will present for a long duration of the time bentonite may be a advantage when you are talking about a rocky terrain your soil whatever is there in the rocky terrain in that case bentonite is very advantageous now there is uh, another one agent which is known as the fly ash so cpri has done one experiment and they have found that uh, the fly ash uh, from the thermal power stations uh, has the equivalent chemical composition and hence can be used for electrical installation in areas of how high ground resistivity so bentonite because uh, bentonite uh, will have some cost but fly ash which is coming from the thermal power station it its chemical composition if you see it is quite closer to the bentonite and we can use it in installation areas and the chemical treatment material fly ash can be used to reduce the soil resistivity so apart from the solution or uh, that we have used this temperature is also an effect on the soil resistivity so temperature coefficient if you see of the resistivity of the soil is negative but is negligible for temperature above freezing point so if we draw a graph between a temperature and the resistivity uh, resistivity temperature coefficient and resistivity we will get a negative graph but uh, is negligible around zero when it is above freezing point so at a temperature of 20 degree centigrade the water in the soil what is the water present in the soil will begin to freeze and introduce a tremendous increase in the temperature coefficient so temperature coefficient will increase at a temperature only 20 degree centigrade so 20 degree centigrade is not even the room temperature so resistivity changes around 9% per degree centigrade below 0 degree if you go centigrade resistivity rises abnormally so freezing point like in a snow areas if you go if you go for the snow and freezing areas those areas polar regions uh, and in those regions if you, you if you want to put some substations or the transmission tower then you see the temperature is very less there negative so resistivity what happen is that it will be rising abnormally there in that particular regions and hence the effect will be there on the soil due to the moisture content in the soil and the moisture content will be expressed in percentage by weight of dry soil so we take the dry soil and what is the moisture which is present uh, with respect to the dry soil that we need to measure so if you talk about the dry earth so it will be weighing around uh, 1440 kg per meter cube and therefore 144 kg of water is required per cubic meter of soil to have 10% of the moisture content so you can understand that uh, when we talk about the dry soil which is not having any moisture its weight we have uh, determined which is uh, 1440 kg per meter cube and you are using 144 kg of water that is only 10% and per meter cube of the soil to have 10% of the moisture content so that is the standard uh, being used and 20% moisture the resistivity is very little if affected below 20% the moisture the resistivity increases very abruptly with decrease in moisture so if the moisture is not present in the soil then the resistivity will increase and if the resistivity will increase then it is not a good feature we need to put the resistance low hence the resistivity will be 
and a proper check for the soil features moisture content of about 17 to 18% by weight of dry soil is the optimum requirement so optimum requirement is what 17 to 18% you have to put and this is with respect to dry soil so whatever the soil uh, where the electrical appliances are being put that is uh, measured with respect to dry soil and the water content in that particular soil should be around 17 to 18% so the availability of the moisture will assist formation of electrolyte by dissolving the soil content in the soil and thereby in enhance the conductivity of the soil so if you want to improve the conductivity of any soil you have to first check with what is the moisture content of the soil so moisture content of the soil if you want to check the reference that you need to do is with respect to dry soil so you need to put around 17 to 18% of the moisture and this moisture is not only a water the water is mixed with other reconditioning agents whether it is a salt, normal salt or whether it is a bentonite or whether it is a fly ash then only the conductivity will improve so water content cannot improve the soil resistivity so it is not that we can say that water you keep on pouring only water and the soil resistivity will improve it is not like that we need to put some agent also together with the water then only the soil resistivity will change so that is a very important feature of the earth we have seen and how the this soil or the earth uh, from place to place we are uh, using and uh, how how we can improve that that we have seen so okay uh, if you want to ask any question regarding this phenomena you can ask me now one clarification <clears throat> somewhere in grounding we are saying we are adding register okay and then grounding it and mm -hmm. here we are saying saying that for the ground uh, the for the earth the resistance should be lesser mm -hmm. this uh, not clarifying properly okay let us understand this in a uh, little bit with an example suppose you have a, gen a generator or a transformer that is a device generator or a transformer is a three phase system you have three conductors so three phase system this generator or a transformer when it is a three phase system it is connected in the form of a star connected network so star connected network will have a neutral point that is a common point this common point you need to earth and the common point which you need to earth may be with the help of a resistance or a reactance so a resistance which you have put between the neutral point of a device and the earth that resistance plays an important role now where you have put that device resistance that resistance you have put in the form of a conductor in the earth and the soil property also plays an important role because ultimately what you are doing ultimately you are converting or transforming or sending the fault current from your device to the earth now sender is which which device sender is a generator receiver is the earth now if the receiver is not good then do you do you think the sender who is sending this current uh, he will be able to send the current and the receiver will pick so from a communication point of view if you think the device is basically the sender of a fault current and the earth is basically a receiver of the fault current so it means the receiver has to be very good so that it can accept the fault current that is the first point second point uh, between the sender and the receiver what is there between the sender and the receiver you have earthing system so earthing system means whatever the different type of earthing we have studied whether it is a tns earthing it earthing or any earthing now that is a system earthing now again the second level of earthing uh, when we talk about it is the device earthing so device earthing uh, depends upon whether the device neutral is available or not that depends upon whether it is a delta connected network or whether it is a star connected network if it is a star connected network which is mostly the cases for our thing then in that case 
that neutral point is earthed with the help of a some conductor and that conductor will have some resistance or the reactance so the resistance r is of the conductor which is to be earthed the resistivity is of the soil nature where you have put that device is it clear now yeah but you yes. have you you have you have a you have a generator or a transformer or a, a transmission tower that is being located in the polar regions or in the himalayan regions and one uh, tower is located suppose uh, here in the south where ocean is there one transformer is located at a place where suppose chatisgarh or madhya pradesh where very plain area is there so the characteristic of the soil in these three regions whether it is a a uh, freezing point below temperature region or whether it is a near to ocean region or whether it is a plain region all where the characteristic of the soil will be different and the soil is the receiving end it has to receive now if the soil is the receiving end its property has to be good if its property is not good then it will not able to take that fault current now fault current how the sender will send if there if the neutral is not grounded if the neutral is not grounded it means sender itself is not sending the fault current receiver is ready to take the fault current receiver is the earth which is ready to take the fault current but sender who is the generator there the fault has occurred but the neutral point is not grounded so it means sender is not sending the fault current now if the sender has to send the fault current its neutral has to be earthed now neutral if it is earthed then there are again different process of neutral earthing which depends upon the level of the fault current if the level of the fault current is only 10% you go by different earthing process if the level of the earthing if the level of the fault current is 25% you go by different uh, process of earthing so depending upon the process of depending upon the level of the fault process of earthing will be different process of earthing will be different again the nature of the soil will affect the process of earthing so soil property has to be improved uh, whether uh, it is located um, in the rocky regions or whether it is located in the plain region only difference is that in the rocky region where the uh, you have a rocks like himalayan regions there the treatment process will be regular most costly and uh, the period of time number of times the treatment has to be done often but in a plain region where this where you are getting um, rainy season is there summer season is there then in that case if you if you if you see then uh, the number of times the treatment being done for the soil will be less okay. so uh, that is all about the soil anything else from anybody side other than soil uh, uh, any other thing is uh, observed yes apart from soil uh, there is something called mess grid and uh, you have a, a rock like uh, the marble or the gravel if you have gone to any substation if you have visited any substation you will see that above the soil they have put some gravel or marble over it what is the reason that gravel are put above the soil because if that gravel you are not putting above the soil then what will happen is that the fault current when it occur in a device then that will lead to the step potential whenever the two feet you are putting it on the substation and near to the transformer there will be earth potential rise so the soil also even even you are standing on the soil with a proper insulated shoe the shoe is not protecting you the earth is not protecting you it is the marble which is there and the below the soil if you see there is a earth grid which is made up of copper some mess is there so four different five different protections are there in the substation which is which will not be there in your home because in your home you have fridge tv washing machine their protection is different and the protection that you are doing for a transformer is different in the substation the protection whatever you are doing for a generator uh, used in the generating uh, power plant is a different the protection that you are doing for a motor to lift the water down the down the ground to your terrace uh, the tank 
that protection will be different. So depending upon what type of protection you required and what is the level of the voltage, what is the location, the soil, marble, mesh grid, uh, conductivity, uh, conductors, rod, everything will change. So it, it depends upon the application. Also, wood is used, whether any uh, reason or any other. Yeah. So let me uh, talk about the wood little bit. So uh, if you have observed the towers, uh, the transmission towers, distribution towers, if you have observed, then you must have observed that distribution towers are made up of which material? Yeah. In uh, if you if you go for uh, the like uh, rural areas. You will see that somewhere the distribution towers are made up of cement, and somewhere the distribution towers are made up of wood. Somewhere the distribution towers are made up of uh, the aluminium as the material. Why the distribution towers are made up of different type of materials? What is the reason? Why the distribution towers are not made up of uh, aluminium in every place? Why not with the cement? Why not with the wood every place? So there is a difference. Uh, between the use of these distribution towers. Distribution towers, where the level of the voltage is very high, in that particular case, if you use wood as the material, then what will happen during the rainy season, there will be moisture absorbed by the wood. So it means that the wood will uh, rupture itself, the wood will flow a leakage current because of the moisture present in wood is a non-conducting material, right? It is an insulating material. But due to the presence of the moisture in the wood, uh, the ins insulating current will be flowing, leakage current will be flowing, and the level of the voltage, if it is high, it means that it is an important tower. See, the tower which is giving the voltage to a small village of 10 people is not that much important. But the tower which is distributing the voltage in a very big city, which is having a 5,000 city, uh, people or 10,000 people living, that tower is important. The tower which is present a place where people is less uh, and it is having heavy rain like Meghalaya type of region, then what type of tower should be used? If we, if we use wood because of rain, the wood will be vanishing. If we use uh, aluminum, cost will be more, people is less, then we should go some intermediate path. So if you see that region, the cement is used as a uh, tower because cement will uh, cement is uh, very good for uh, water droplets. So if you have a rainy season and you are using a cement, the water droplet will go inside the cement and it will become more crystalline, more thick. So where the population is less, you need to uh, use the tower. Why am why I'm giving the example of a tower? Because uh, the conducting material. Uh, is the transmission line and the tower is earth and it is holding the conductor. So the tower, which is the insulating material, it has to be made of either cement or wood or any other material which, which can be earthed properly. So if you are earth, if you are putting a cement in a region where the rain is more, then it will be better because the cost will come down. So Whenever we are using any system or any device or any protection measure, the factors are so many. What are the factors? Where you are using this device? That is the first factor. Second factor is what is the cost associated with that device? Third factor is what are the climatic conditions of that particular uh, area? So if you, if you think that... Um, why not we put a bentonite always? Why we are putting uh, the coal uh, so salt solution, sodium chloride and other things, right? We could put bentonite always or the fly as always. No, depending upon the cost and other investment which are associated with it. So that is the reason, but wood is a very good, you know, uh, what is the pro um, means perfect insulating material given by the nature that is wood only. So wood is the perfect insulating material given by the nature free of cost. But we cannot use wood in certain regions where the rain is so much, rain droplet is so much, because like a Meghalaya side right of region, because of wood will rapture in that case and it will have leakage current to flow. So coming back uh, to the topic, 
this is the last uh, topic that i have taken uh, from the electrical safety point of view so if you revise it what are the topics we are studying uh, when we took this uh, subject electrical safety we have talked about the earthing system we have talked about the device earthing and we have also talked that earth which which is having a soil is very important because earth is the receiver of the leakage current or the fault current now the soil which we are talking is has to be good and its property has to be improved now for that you need to measure what you need to measure the resistance so what is the method of measuring the earth resistance so if we go by that because what we were discussing earlier also the earth resistance has to be measured because then only we can put any type of solution or any type of material in that uh, and how many times we have to put or how what is the level what is the quantity of the agents we need to add that all things we need to see so measurement so measurement of earth resistance there is a method which is known as three point method three point method is called the fall of potential method the, the name three point method or fall of potential method if you see in the figure there are three electrodes being inserted in the earth what are these electrode the electrodes are the earth electrode and there are other two electrodes which is the potential electrode and the current electrode so three electrodes are there these electrodes are separated by certain distance distance has to be uh, different between the potential electrode and the earth electrode the distance has to be more than 20 meters and the distance between the uh, ground electrode and the potential electrode may be something else different and we measure the voltage and the current the so two important uh, measurement we need to do so what is the voltage measurement the potential difference uh, between the uh, the conductor p re represented by the potential electrode and the earth electrode will give you the voltage and the current we need to measure between the current conductor and the earth conductor so we have two different measurement one measurement is for voltage and another measurement is for current once we have measure this uh, voltage and the current then we can apply the ohms law so we know that ohms law is nothing but voltage by current and that gives the resistance so if we want to determine the resistance of the earth we need to we need to measure the voltage and the current which is associated with the earth soil it is not only the soil present even uh, marble will be present some gravel will be present small sand particles will be present so overall resistance of that earth is what for a certain uh, for a certain distance or for a certain location because there only you are going to put the earth electrode so the voltage by current is nothing but the resistance and that resistance you are measuring by the fall of potential method using a three point uh, electrode and you will be getting the resistance now observing that resistance you have to decide whether you need to uh, do the treatment of the soil treatment of the soil means whether you need to put the water uh, moisture or some salt solutions you need to put or you need to have a higher electrode system in that case because whatever the device you are using for earthing system device to device the fault current capacity will be different so fault current capacity will be different it means that depend upon the earth resistance also so earth resistance is a very governing factor and it has to be measured and this measurement has to be done time to time once you have done a measurement after a certain duration of the time now what are the factors uh, that will uh, lead you to decide the time the factor will be depending upon the temperature the or uh, your experience you, you will be experience uh, in understanding that yes this soil is of this nature after a certain duration of the time whether it it will be 15 days or month or a year after that only the quality of the soil is changing so you need to do the measurement and take the appropriate step and hence the earth resistance will be uh, improved so overall whatever we have discussed regarding the safety feature of the earthing system is that uh, 
right from the device uh, um, safety, right from the total overall installation safety, and how do we improve it, what are the hazards, and what are the residual current devices installed at different uh, installation, whether it is a home, whether it is industry, whether it is hospitals, that all things overall we have discussed under the principles of electrical safety. Although this topic is uh, quite vast, you have a lot of things to be taken in this topic, but overall we have understood the phenomena that is uh, to be known under the principles of electrical safety.